Hi there, it's Mr. Warren, and I am hanging out in this little wonderful patch of sunny woods to get into some of the details of the light reactions of photosynthesis. So, I um, want to keep in mind um, the basic idea that we're working with in terms of photosynthesis. In terms of, uh, we have two things going on. One um, is that photosynthesis is like a power plant. Um, that provides energy for a sugar factory. Look at those wonderful pieces of candy. Um, all right, so in this video, we're going to focus on the uh, power plant aspect. So converting energy from one form into another. Because we can't create energy, we can only convert it. And that's going to happen in what are called the light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. And um, we're going to see that the light-dependent reactions produce two things that are used for energy by the sugar factory, um, ATP and a thing called NADPH. Um, so that's like the stuff that's going to be going through the wires from the power plant to various places that are using it. Um, there are some inputs necessary, and there is a waste product involved, um, oxygen. And we can be very thankful of that waste product because we breathe it in all the time. So, um, a very important concept to deal with here in the light-dependent reactions um, is that we're going to be looking at uh, the behavior of electrons. And what we're going to see is that light energy in the form of photons um, is going to energize electrons. Um, so this little diagram um, gives you kind of a metaphorical sense of what's going on, is that electron, an electron is going to get bumped up to a relatively high energy level, um, and then it's going to go downhill energy-wise um, and give up some of its energy to power the production of ATP. And then the electrons are going to be energized again by other photons and jump up to an even higher energy level, and those electrons are going to be captured in a bucket, sometimes I call it a wheelbarrow, um, however you want to think about that, um, NADPH is really just some type of carrying mechanism for a high energy electron. So look for the energizing of electrons. We're going to take a little bit closer look here. And again, the most, a lot of the photosynthesis that we deal with is taking place inside of um, a chloroplast, which is a membrane bound compartment inside of a cell. Um, and the light dependent reactions are happening on the membrane of the thylakoids, the little compartments inside of the compartment. All right, so we're going to see there are thousands or even hundreds of thousands of repeats of what we're going to look at here in every chloroplast. And there are chloroplasts, and there are many chloroplasts in, um, photos, in each photosynthetic cell. So here's some anatomy that we need to deal with. So again, think about we're, we're looking at the membrane of the thylakoid. So here is the typical phospholipid bilayer membrane. Um, and then there are a number of things that are embedded in that membrane. And we're looking at sort of one set of those things, but there are going to be thousands of, again, if not hundreds of thousands of repeats or even millions of repeats of this stuff in each thylakoid and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we have... Um, two different photo things called photosystems. They're the green ones here. Photosystem two is on our left. Photosystem one is kind of in the middle of this other stuff. Then we have um, this stuff here really is the electron transport chain. And I bet the name, you can figure out from the name what that does. Um, and then over here, uh, we have an enzyme and we'll get into enzymes later in the course um, in more detail, but it's an enzyme called NADP plus reductase. All right, so this stuff needs to exist all in fairly close proximity to one another because, as we'll see, there's some action that takes place um, where there's some passing off of stuff that takes place there. Um, the ATP synthase um, doesn't necessarily have to be in this position, um, but it does need to be there because it's the thing that actually produces the ATP. And there are going to be a lot of these in that thylakoid membrane. All right, so that's the basic anatomy take a second to think about what is a photosystem. Well, probably, you know, learned back in elementary school or whenever that, okay, plants are green and plants are green because they have chlorophyll. Maybe got a little bit more detailed in terms of where's the chlorophyll um, 
as you got a little bit older and learned a little bit more, okay, so it's in the cell or maybe plant cells or maybe it's in the chloroplasts. Um, but we're going to get really specific about the location of chlorophyll um, and the function of chlorophyll here in, um, in AP Bio. So chlorophyll is a pretty special molecule um, because it, um, it's one of those molecules that allows its electrons to get excited um, and they're held in such a way that they, they get excited and they come back down. So if you're, um, hopefully you remember a little bit of the um, learning about the Bohr model of the atom and um, exciting electrons jumping up um, and then falling back down and giving off light, kind of like, if I can do this, if I um, shine a light on my watch and uh, then hopefully you can see that the um, things on the dial are glowing. Chlorophyll does kind of that same thing. Um, in this picture right here showing that if you shine the right wavelength on um, chlorophyll that's been extracted from plant cells, it's going to give off light. All right. Well, big whoop. All right. So you have a glowing watch. Um, you have some glowing chlor chlorophyll. Um, what's that going to do? Well, <clears throat> in actuality, the, the glowing is happening because the electrons are um, falling back down from their excited state. The thing about a photosystem is that the chlorophyll molecules are arranged in such a way that the electrons get passed off from one molecule to another um, and then or energy gets transferred from one chlorophyll molecule to another and then eventually um, <clears throat> there's a chlor special chlorophyll molecule in the center of the, of the photosystem that gives up an electron and that electron can then go do work. Um, so again, basic gist here is energy of light um, hits chloroplasts in this photosystem. So that's where the, the chlorophyll actually is. There's a transfer of energy to this center um, chlorophyll, which gives up an electron. And then that electron is going to do the work of um, the energy of that electron is going to be converted into ATP and NADPH. So um, there's a couple of ways that that can happen. Um, one is that light can start with, uh, you can start with a photon hitting chlorophyll in photosystem two. Um, electrons get excited and they generate ATP through the electron transport chain. And then that electron can get excited again in photosystem one and end up um, being combined with NADP plus to make NADPH. All right, so that's one of the ways that things can happen. Another way that things can happen is that you can just have electrons excited in photosystem one and they end up going through the electron transport chain um, and generating ATP and then going back and getting excited and going back to the electron transport chain and producing ATP and just cycling back that way. All right, so there's two different, two different paths that the electrons can take. They can take this cyclical path or they can take this kind of linear path where they start off in photosystem two and end up in NADPH uh, um, after being combined with NADP+. Plus. All right, and we're going to look at that. Um, if this seems a little abstract right now, we'll get a little bit more concrete here. All right, we'll take a look at some action, um, and we're going to take a look at a video. So let's break that down into um, into some smaller steps or yeah smaller steps that are a little, maybe a little bit easier to catch. All right, so we have our basic anatomy here. Um, this is not the sun. This is a single photon. Um, and so what we have is that photon exciting an electron. So its energy is being transferred to an electron in photosystem two, and that electron then is guided on a journey through the electron transport chain. And that journey, that movement, um, it gives up some of its energy in that process. So some of the energy is lost in the movement, but some of the energy is lost uh, or used to move hydrogen ions from outside of the thylakoid to the inside of the thylakoid. Um, so <clears throat> what we have now is a higher concentration of hydrogen ions on the inside than, the, than on the outside. All right. So um, photosystem two, remember, just lost an electron. Well, 
we can't create or destroy matter so in order for this system to keep working that electron or those electrons need to be replaced and that's where water comes in so photosystem 2 not only does it excite electrons but it also splits water um, and water gets split electrons are taken from water um, and that does two things one it replenishes the electron or electrons that have been lost it increases the hydrogen ion concentration of the inside of the thylakoid and we have the waste product being given off which we don't think of as a waste product but thank you plants for all that oxygen all right so that's kind of the next phase keep in mind that all this stuff is happening all the time as soon as light hits a plant all this stuff is going on at once all right so um keep in mind we've got a high concentration of hydrogens on the inside um, but we need to take up the story of photosystem one here so we have our electron that lost some of the energy that in its journey um, and when a photon hits photosystem one that electron is going to get excited again um, and this actually should be NADP plus um, this is a molecule keep in mind it's kind of like a bucket it's an empty bucket this is the NADP plus reductase that's an enzyme the electron after it gets excited in photosystem one is going to be guided on a journey and actually loaded onto NADP plus and that converts it into NADPH that then goes away <clears throat> so we then have um, and again keep in mind that all this is happening at once a high concentration of hydrogen ions so basic diffusion stuff which is we'll, we'll do some more in-depth work with those ideas later in the year um, but materials move from an area of high concentration to low concentration lots of hydrogens on the inside not so many on the outside they are dying to get out the only place they can get through easily is the ATP synthase so the hydrogens move through there and that powers the production of ATP so we'll produce a little bit of ATP here and the ATP and the NADPH those are those disappeared from our little scenario there because what they are they are the power supply for the sugar factory so they are going to energize the Calvin cycle and the sugar factory for the production of sugar which we'll look at in another video hope that was helpful please track me down if you have questions